Good evening, and welcome to Twin Motion, but with templates. I bet you didn't know Twin Motion had templates. It turns out they don't. But we're going to make one. And nonetheless, we'll leave this video with the knowledge of being able to make or use or something, a template. So before we get into it, if at any point you happen to learn something, please, please demolish that like button. It helps out a lot. Also, definitely comment down below uh, what you like, especially what you don't like about all my videos, whatever it is, whether it's this one or any other one, please let me know. Dying to know what you think. So getting into it now. So templates in Twinmotion, this is honestly one big knock that I've had on Twinmotion is that we have not had templates. And this is a prime program for wanting to have some kind of template to go off of. And what do we mean by this? Well, we mean a decent starting point or not only just a starting point, but maybe you do the same type of rendering, the same type of scene, or you want to have a lot of the same assets in one place that you can easily access. Yes, you have the user library. Yes, we have all of the things that we're used to seeing as far as elements here, but we want to start with something more. And so this is my best attempt at giving you what that might be. And I know Twinmotion did a separate video, and it's fine. Go watch that one, too, because it's good. And we're going to do similar things, but it, this is more of my opinion of what I would include in a template. And this is not exactly what I would include in a template, because, you know, I'm throwing things on a platter for you, basically to give you an idea of what you might do. I would tend to make my templates. Well, I do tend to make templates, whether it's in Twinmotion or not. Uh, quite specific, and that's because it needs to be for something very specific, and I want that. And so if you want something general, do that too. So getting into this now, right now, I have just a bunch of boxes that I've applied materials to. And so why would I do this? Well, <laughs> I would do this because this would allow me to quickly access these materials in a project. And so let's see what happens. I'm going to just query one of these materials, and I'm going to go to all my materials. And you'll notice I have six materials here. Well, and in fact, I have six materials here as well. So this is telling me, and I'm telling you, that the result of doing nothing, basically just starting a new scene, is you have no, pro uh, no materials in the whole project. And so what does this do? This allows you to quickly have materials in the project really, really quickly. Now, obviously, I don't want to delete this necessarily, but the cool thing is I can because I deleted a box, yet the material is still there. So... You decide how you want to handle it, whether you want to actually delete these objects after you make them and apply materials or not. I will say this is basically the same as Revit. Once you make a material and whatever, if you take some something with a material and move it to a new project, you end up deleting that object, you'll have that material, which is cool. So something else I've done here is made a folder for template elements. Now, what I need to do is actually make sure my boxes or whatever elements I end up making are within this folder because this is the type of thing where you know you start the template uh, you make it save it and you would want to start with this and so i open this and i have all of this and i don't want this here i want the stuff in my project but maybe i want to access it later maybe i don't want to delete it well then it's a simple hide and i don't actually lose anything in my project of course the cool thing about this is that i could delete it at least from a material standpoint so that is materials we've dealt with materials so just if you want to boom paste materials in and that's it and just no we're not doing anything special as far as what this file is it's not like a twin motion template file that doesn't exist i would hope so in the future but it's just a simple file save as and i'm working in a file called underscore template you know is what it is and so the point here is that you know i don't have to start from a blank screen or blank scene when i'm importing from revit or another program i can open this particular file and then just simply import whatever I want to from this file, meaning that I have all of these elements here already. And so, you know, we can take this a step further because we've looked at materials. Now, something else I want to do, we can just go down the list of things here that we might want to include. Now, I will say any object or something you would like drag out into the scene from the library, you know, they... <laughs> Unless it's super specific and you don't want to have to dig for it, it's probably not worth adding, you know, just honestly. Um, but there are some things that I want to get to. And now, of course, sky domes, that's perfectly fine. But, you know, it, it's more like, why don't you, of course, make sure they're downloaded. But besides that, you know, if you want to have this 
ha- have the sky dome on cool you know like a good starting sky dome maybe it's not the default one you know that's kind of you you're, you're going to start with a sky dome that's specific and maybe yeah maybe again you don't want this one maybe you want a different one well in that case you know we would drag this one it, it doesn't matter that happens to be the one that's applied now but it doesn't matter so you get the idea this is a starting point so moving down here uh, vegetation you know most of these don't matter uh, but what I do want to get to is specifically down here in vegetation. So I've got the vegetation, paint, and scatter. We've covered these many, many times before. So I'm just going to dump some things in here. I don't, I don't really care. It's just a bunch. And obviously I don't have to have just trees. It can be all kinds of different things here. Obviously this is a lot. And of course we probably want a lot of grass as well. So regardless, all of this. Of course if we can have a, only a certain number here. We want to make sure we have a grass. So putting this in. So now we're at the point where we have built this. Now all we need to do is, you know, apply it, put it somewhere. And so what does this do? Well, it creates a ton of vegetation. Obviously, we can see this is a mess. But let's say we get this to the point where it's like, you know, I'm happy with the density, the size of these things. You know, we, we've, we've gone through and we've edited the amount of things that we see here, and, you know, we're happy with it. Okay, well, if that's the case, then literally it is another element that falls into my template and so what do we have here? Well, what we're left with is whenever I open this, boom, I've got a painted vegetation. And I would probably rename it if, you know, if it, template vegetation, template painted vegetation, anything like that. But what I have here is literally a place to start. And so what would I do at this point? Well, let's say I open this scene right now. And then I import all my objects in because I've started this as my template. Well, I can literally go here, select it. I can e literally erase everything. But not only can I just erase everything, but I can actually place this where I want it to go. And I, I'm done. Like, I, I've built this already. It's a part of the template, which is really kind of cool. And so I don't, it, it doesn't matter where it is, of course, but it is nice that you can, of course, put it anywhere. You can hide it, but then you just have this to access. You know, you could even duplicate all this stuff, and so you don't have to even erase it. You just delete it, that type of thing. There's a ton of different ways you can go about it. So there's that. That's exciting. And so another thing I'm going to do is along the same lines of that, but I don't quite want to use the same thing, of course. I also don't want to dump this entire thing that I'm about to put the, the vegetation scatter on my starting ground, necessarily. You can if you want. These are just kind of things that are up to you. But I want to take a primitive here and just another box. And maybe it's another box, whatever. doesn't matter. There's a nice little plane. And so what I want to do now is, again, come to my landscape, but I'm going to put the scatter. And we're just going to do the same thing. If Obviously, this is the part of the template that you go through and you build. All right, I definitely want this. I definitely want that. Put some rocks, whatever it is, things like that, trees, of course. And we get to the point where, all right, I'm happy with what this is. And then, you got it. You, you guessed it. We just start applying these objects to here, however much we want, just like this. And once we've built this scatter, like you, you get the idea here. We are, we're good. You, you can get all the settings here. At this point, it's the exact same as the painted vegetation. Of course, I want to put these in the template folder. And so now, look at this. This is great. You know, I can even move this around if I need to. Don't want it there. Like you, you get the idea. So we've got a really nice looking scene here of basic elements that I really want to have in a starting place. And again, hide it all. I still have access to it all. I can even you know at this point boom I want to see this kind of thing so I can start with that it's easy so that's probably the biggest stuff and that these things you might have thought of you might not have thought of but you know those types of things and obviously any other element you want here to have access to really easily really quickly put it in here not a big deal so with that we can move on to probably more of what you would have guessed might have been in a template file. And that is all the like render settings and blah, blah, things like that. Of course, go through everything else that you want. If you want a default uh, location or a default weather or environment or background, things like that, all of that, everything that you can put into this file to start with, you want to do. But the main thing then here, of course, is this, you know, I have an image. Great. Look at it. It's gorgeous, right? Clearly. So at this point, first I want to rename this because this is nothing more than a template image. And so I will literally call it template. This is my template. And so this is going to ship with the file, of course. 
And at this point, we absolutely want to make sure that we get this to where we want it to be. And it could be absolutely anything. You know, obviously, we went through all the different settings you can you can go through, whatever, whatever. You know, if I want this type of a template file, maybe I don't ever want to have to bother making a rainy image again. And so I just make make it once as a default in template, and I've got rain. I start with this. I you know that kind of thing. It really is up to you. So I I think it's pretty nice that we could actually do this to a degree. You know, I wish we had true template files, but you can see where we're starting with. It's a pretty good place to start with because I could do the same thing for images, panoramas, videos. You get the idea. It's really nice. And maybe present presentation, things like that. You want to start with something more than just this. And I it's totally worth doing, which I think I think I might even do. I might even use this to a degree. <laughs> Obviously I don't like this stuff necessarily, but you get the idea of what we're doing, which I think is pretty valuable. You know, same thing with all these export settings. Don't forget those. You know, a lot of these are, you know, default, and we're okay with the default. Um, but it's not just the export settings. It's more like the format is what I'm talking about. You know, maybe you don't want to ever have to go to a 4K resolution again because you've checked UHD here, and now that every time you duplicate from this file this particular image, then that's it. Obviously, if we're going to use this, we just duplicate this. We move somewhere else and say, okay, that's exactly what I want. I update this here, make sure to rename it, and there we go. We are good to go. So, again, do this with any other type of file, export settings, you, you name it. There's a ton of different things that you can work with. Um, obviously, you'll have access to more export options once you've made one of those type of you know elements, exports. So things like that. that. That's kind of it for this video. I, I hope you are able to make the template files that you want. Of course, um, something I would, the only other object I think I would put in might be, and that's really, it's forgotten about quite a lot, uh, is actually the reflection probes and, you know, whichever one you want to use. But, you know, these are very powerful things. They're very underrated, not used as much as they should be, honestly. So it would be nice to have it in your scene. And of course, just know that the settings that apply to these specific objects and maybe you have lights that you're like oh i love this light and i you know the breath and all of this the attenuation all of that get those settings right then you have it in the file ready to go and you just copy it or put it where you want it to go good to go so these will this will not only allow you to use these things very quickly and easily and because they're in your project and in this folder but it it would allow even new users to say all right you're starting with this these are the type of quality of elements or this is the type of light we want to use or this is the type of setting that you want to use for reflect reflection probes all of that really good places to start so i i definitely hope you learned something because there's a lot here um may not have been like true things to learn but just another way of thinking because we don't have access to templates into emotion hopefully we will at some point you can take this for what it is and make a template for whatever you need it to be so again, that will do it. If you have any comments, let me know what you think of this video, really any other video. I'm looking for ways to get a little different. So leave those in the comment section below. And if you did happen to learn something, which I hope you did, and that's why we're here, then please demolish that like button. And then that will do it. I will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day, and thank you very much for watching this evening.